Hello and welcome back to Clicks and Classics with Still Live. We are here at the campus where we have to uh, interview a person that is connected to at least two of the victims. And because we have to f catch the killer, let's jump right back in and waste no more time. Um, guess don't think there's anything else outside, so... Let's enter. Then we have a lady. We can't talk to her though. Appears like I can only go upstairs. And it appears I can only select this door. Who is it? Agent McPherson, FBI. I have a few questions I'd like to ask you, if you have the time. I have time for the pretty agent. May I come in? Sure. Geez, sorry I asked. What? Oh, nothing. Just thinking out loud. Oh, okay. Did you know a Natalie Kenworth? Yes, I did. So I imagine you also know that she was murdered about a month ago. Yes, and I already talked to a police officer about her. Yeah, I know, but I would appreciate if you could remind me. How did you know her? Friend? Just a classmate? Were you intimate? I was her tutor. She was studying in criminology, and I was helping her with some of her classes. She came here often. Criminology? Do you know Cynthia Woods? Cynthia Woods? No, I don't think so. Are you sure? Maybe a photo would help. Oh, yes. I have seen her before. She's my neighbor's friend. Okay. I saw her at a party. That picture was taken there. So you're not close to Cynthia? No, she's more my neighbor's friend. I think I saw her twice in all, at the party and once in the hallway. Uh, why? She was found brutally murdered in an abandoned apartment building. You don't think that... Hey, I'm always in here working on my thesis. I never go out. I, I went to Mia's party because she invited me. I think she invited me so I wouldn't complain about the noise. Mia's the other girl in the picture? Yes, she's my neighbor. I mean, we probably should talk to her, I guess. Your thesis, what's the subject? I'm doing it on a serial murder case called the Perlovka Ripper. It happened in the late 20s. Well, you don't say. Are you familiar with the case? You could say that, yes. What a coincidence! Do you mind if I take a look at it? Sure, I'll even print you up a copy. That's nice. A student in criminology, huh? Did you ever get Professor Pratt? No, but I know him. I've had several conversations about weird unsolved cases. Does he still have bad B.O.? B.O.? Body odor. In other words, he stinks. <laughs> yes, he still does. Oh boy. Okay, can I have the copy now? Sure, I'll be right back. Okay, interesting. So he is actually studying the chance. case of I should swipe something our grandfather. Ooh, Prince. It's not yeah. a sample of semen that I want, but fingerprints. Oh. <laughs> I mean, why not both? He would notice that missing. I don't want to get nailed on entrapment. Are you a bottle? I mean, just an empty bottle, right? Okay, good. This will do nicely. Here you are. Thank Thanks you. A lot. I'll be sure to read it. I'd really appreciate your input if you ever have the time. Will do. You're not planning on leaving the country. No. Fine. Thanks for your cooperation, and I'll keep in touch. Okay, interesting. We got uh, a document here. Cola's thesis proposal. Without remorse, unsolved serial killings, an examination of the 1930... 
uh, 31 Chicago serial killings and their relation to the 1929 Palovka Ripper killings in Prague, Czech Republic by Václav Kolar, a research paper submitted in partial fulfillment of the requirements for the Master of Arts. Degree, why is, why are, is there no space? Degree in Criminology approved, six semester credits, Department of Psychology, the University of Chicago, February 2004. Uh, I intend to examine the case reports of both the uh, uh, 1929 Palovka Ripper killings in Prague, Czech Republic, and the 1931 Chicago serial killings in order to establish commonality of method and signature which suggests that both series of murders were in fact carried out by the same individual aha uh -huh. interesting that might be the connection between the two stories uh, campus university of chicago first victim work there, number three and four were students. Add that to the theory of killer knew the fourth one, and the university looks like a good place to check out. Introducing Cola. Great. Now, some obsessed loser wants to prove Granddad was a serial killer. He is hoping nobody hears about that down south. Cola does seem really interested in serial killings, though. To too interested? It has happened that people like that eventually decide to try it for themselves. Here we go. Should at least keep an eye on that. We also got a fingerprint sample that we probably should bring back to the police station next. Oh, we have a phone call. Hello? Hey, it's me. What's up? Nothing much. I was just calling to say I was on my way to visit victim 5's roommate. Maybe she can tell us more about Vaclav and the other girl in the picture. No need. I know who she is. She's Vaclav's neighbor. Actually, I just finished the interview. How did it go? He's harmless. Anyways, he doesn't fit the profile. But I did nick a little something with Prince. I'm taking it over to Claire for comparisons. Great idea, but we can't use it, though, if he checks out. I know. Call me if you get anything interesting out of the roommate. Will do. Bye. Bye. Okay. So the game actually guides uh, you pretty directly to where to go once you have found what you need to find. Which makes uh, it, I guess, a little bit easier because you don't have to run around as much back and forth so far. Which I appreciate. I think it's not really necessary for the difficulty. And... Um, but it also keeps the game, the story flowing a little more nicely and, and a little more consistently. I can appreciate that. Let's bring that to her. I guess it we bring that to her, right? Uh, the symbol Hi, showed up. Hey. There we are. Can you check this bottle out for prints and compare them to the partials you got on victims four and five? I don't think we'll hit anything, but I'm curious. Curiosity killed the cat. But a cat has nine lives. Let's stop the cliches before someone gets shot. Can you at least extract the prints for me? Once extracted, the computer can compare the partials. Sure. Remind me where the stuff is? The powder's upstairs on my desk near the plastifying machine, along with the brush and lifting tape. When you're done, just give me the print and I'll handle the rest down here. Okay, oh yeah, I'll we right examined back. that before. Anything here? can do now I could see if I have some metachlorians in my blood my okay. god that was weak nothing new there okay let's go upstairs and get the fingerprint There we 
go. Oh yeah, Miller isn't there. Told us about that. And then here, right? Oh yeah, okay. So that's I guess the powder. So that. Uh, do that I have won't to, work. To do that, I can't on, just use the brush. This will do nicely for prints. Okay. Did it, I think. Nothing else? I'll just take the... This is gray powder. Useful for finding latent prints. Uh, uh. A plastifier. This little machine can be very practical. Okay. I th oh, what was that here? Okay. Guess we have everything, so let's go back down. I don't feel uncomfortable in this empty office with the murderer breaking into the office before. Okay. Back down. Password is vodka. We learned that. I'm all done with the prints. Let's put I'll have the results soon. Where are you off to now? Back to my dad's. I've got some reading to do. Well, okay. I'll call you if I get something. Okay, okay, thanks a lot. So I guess we return home. Our tiny truck. That thing is huge. Uh, Pat's house. Pat's house. The proportions in this game are sometimes a little bit off, I feel. Like this giant car and. The house seems weirdly shaped too, but I don't know. Maybe that's just how it works hey, in Chicago. Sweetheart. I never was in Chicago. Hi, Dad. When do you think you can do those cookies? Oh, geez. Sorry, Dad, I forgot. I have time now. Oh, it's okay. It's not a problem, Dad. A promise is a promise. Okay, I guess we have to uh, make the cookies now. Da -da -da -da. Okay. Okay. Uh, gingerbread man. One cup of love, half cup of generosity, two cups of commitment, one cup of sweetness, a half cup of integrity, one tablespoon of romance, one teaspoon of sensuality. One common sense. In a bowl, cream together generosity, sweetness, and love to give your man a sweetheart. To give him devotion, simply sift together commitment, sensuality, and romance. Blend devotion to his sweetheart. Finally, add intelligence, a mix of common sense and integrity, and beat it with the rest to make your perfect man. Give him a form and place him place in the oven. Remember not to overcook. Okay, does it tell us what we have here?
Okay, th those are eggs. Last milk, I guess. What's... Oh, okay. I just have to hover over it. Brown sugar, flour, okay. Butter, cinnamon, ginger, eggs, milk, molasses. Okay. Ooh, that. So, what? What do we need first? First, we need generosity, sweetness, and love. So we need... Um, I need to write that down for myself so I don't have to always check that. So it's we need one cup of love. Cup of love. Then sweetness. One cup of... Of... Sweet... This. and generosity uh half a cup Ossity. so now the question obviously is which ingredients is which um now i would assume that sugar is the sweetness right Why do we have two cups? Oh, that's probably the half cup. Okay, so let's take one cup of brown sugar as the sweetness, right? So what is generosity and what is love? I don't know. Generosity. Flower. Mm. Also, what makes sense in terms of a recipe? Maybe, maybe generosity could be butter. Oh, no, but it was half a... Oh, no, I threw it away. Okay. Okay, full cup of brown sugar. Then I wanted to do a half cup of butter. But then... Would be the question, what is love? Is it maybe molasses? Be that... And then I guess mix first. So then the next one. What was the next one? Um, devotion. Commitment. Two cups. Um... Then sensuality, one teaspoon. Then romance, uh, romance. Do we have romance there? Tablespoon. Mm, romance, okay, and then we would blend it again. So, okay. Two cups of commitment, sensuality, and romance. Um, okay. Now that's a question. Like, would, like, I guess... Hmm. Maybe commitment would be flour, since that, that would make sense in terms of a recipe with two cups of flour. 
But then we need sensuality and romance. Uh... Guess, since I would assume that these are the ones we use with the spoons, just the question which one is which. Cinnamon sensual. Maybe then ginger would be romance. I don't know why. But maybe that. Maybe the other way around. I guess that these two are the ones for the spoons um so that would be then mixing again and then last we need intelligence mix of common sense and integrity so one common sense i mean that's probably an egg right because we have no like no cup or anything so common sense is probably an egg and integrity would be half a cup. So it would be one egg. And then we only have milk left. Half a cup of milk. No, this doesn't taste right. Ah, no. Okay, uh, what what could be wrong? Maybe everything is wrong. That is the difficult part here. Mm. I mean, I think brown sugar and sweetness is pretty much a good fit here, right? Now, then I took, I think, butter as generosity, and I took molasses as love. What if... I mean, it, I guess it would make sense to have more milk than molasses, so maybe, maybe we just switch these two out, which would mean it would be one cup of milk and another one... A half a cup of butter, then. If, if that, if we stay with everything else correctly. Let's try that next. Then also it could be that the, the, the teaspoon, teaspoon brothers are wrong. So I think two cups of flour makes the most sense. So I think flour is kind of um, a lock in our recipe with two cups. Um, I think sugar for sweetness is a log i think the eye uh the eye the um egg for uh, intelligence i think it was or commitment or what, what was it common sense one common sense since there is also a log so i think that that is so what did i now i need sensuality and romance again um, let's try it the same as last time first. Would be a teaspoon of cinnamon. And I guess that's a tablespoon of ginger. Then we would throw in one egg. And uh, then it would be half a cup of molasses. If that is. Okay, let's mix it. This tastes oh, right. Oh, we did it. Dad, we did it. the cookies are in the oven. We're so good. We saved Christmas. Anything else here? Don't forget the cookies, Dad. Oh, I won't, sweetheart. We have to go back up.
Mm, this was our room, right? Ah, okay. There we go. So I guess we continue reading and maybe go back to Gus? The poor kid was badly scarred. The killer stabbed her seven times before she finally escaped to the streets. Odakar's boy Roman found her and brought her here. She's only 16, for God's sake. I promised her that I'd help her in any way I could if she would help me find the killer. So she opened up and told me her story. Can I keep this? Yes. I'm Gustav McPherson. I'm a private eye hired to help find and arrest the person who attacked you. I'm Vladana Tominova. I haven't said that in a long time. I'm usually just Vladana. Do you feel up to a few questions? I can always come back later. No, that's okay. You can ask me questions if you wish, but I'm afraid I won't be much help. Besides the sketch you gave me, can you describe your attacker with a, a little more detail? The top hat was black, and so was his cloak. The mask was silver white. It had motifs on it, but nothing I can describe accurately. When were you attacked? About two months ago. Where did it happen? It happened near the park. I was coming back from Mark's studio, and... Take your time. It was very foggy that evening. I heard someone walking in front of me. I could hear his footsteps getting closer and closer. I stopped when I suddenly saw a silhouette appear behind the fog. A man in a top hat wearing a dark cloak was standing in front of me. I froze. I couldn't move. I was absolutely terrified. What happened next? He approached slowly. I noticed that he was wearing a mask when he walked out of the fog. He looked like death itself. I hadn't noticed how close he had come to me. He took a swift swing at me. As he did, I let out a scream. At first I thought he had missed me, but then I noticed the metallic taste in my mouth. I put my hand to my face and looked at it. It was full of blood. Then I felt a cold sensation in my chest, followed by a sharp pain. Then another, then another. I screamed what seemed to be my last breath. I fainted after that. I woke up in here. He'd stabbed me over and over. It's a miracle I'm still alive. Jeez, how did you end up here in this joint? Roman found me. He was the one who scared off the killer. He heard me screaming, so he ran in the direction of the commotion. I don't know much about that. You should ask him. You mentioned earlier that you left Mark's place the night you were attacked. Who's Mark? Mark is a local artist. Most of the girls know him. I think he's painted all of us at least once. Was Mark acting strange that night, or was it business as usual? Everything was fine until Inspector Skalnik showed up. Wait, didn't, um, wasn't the whole ex, uh, exhibition, um, exhibit, uh, thing, um, in Chicago about a guy called, uh, Mark Ackerman or so? Inspector Skalnik talked to Mark. He was an artist. What did they talk about? I didn't really pay attention to what they were saying, but they were arguing about something. When Skalnik left, Mark told me to get dressed and leave. He told me he wasn't feeling well enough to continue. Was he angry? He was, but he made a good effort not to show it. So I left quietly without saying a word besides good night. So that could be the connection, right? That could be the killer. In general, Mark was always nice. Yes, always cordial, very polite and well-behaved. He would give us double what we charge a client for the time we spent posing. It was a lot better work, let me tell you. I only posed for him once, and I wish I could do it again. Where can I find Mark? His studio is in front of the canal near the old wall. Well, thanks for answering my pesky questions. You're welcome. Take care of yourself, Ladena. And you be careful, too. Thanks, I will. Okay, so we have another suspect. Let's see... 
here. The survivor Vladana wasn't lying to me, but she wasn't telling me the whole truth either. Everybody lies. Some people lie without knowing it. Some to protect themselves, some to protect someone else, and some people lie to play an angle. Some people lie just for the heck of it. Vladana isn't in the last category, but she isn't in the first either. Okay, so we have a suspect, I guess, um, and we will continue here next time with Clicks and Classics still live. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. I will be back tomorrow with more Clicks and Classics still live. Until then, have a great time.